Monseigneur le chancelier, l'équipe de la faculté d'administration est particulièrement fière d'être associée à l'hommage que l'université veut rendre à un homme d'affaires des plus avertis du Québec, M. Sam Stanberg. Prenant la relève de sa mère, Mme Ida Stanberg, qui avait ouvert un petit magasin en 1917 sur le boulevard Saint-Laurent, près du boulevard Mont-Royal, il est président de l'une des plus grandes entreprises de magasins chaînes du Canada. Aujourd'hui, la compagnie qu'il dirige possède 180 magasins d'alimentation au Québec et en Ontario et vient d'ouvrir son troisième magasin européen en plein cœur de Paris. In the summer of 1969, Sam Steinberg, president of Steinberg's Limited of Montreal, received an honorary degree in business administration from Sherbrooke University in the province of Quebec. In 50 years of one-man rule, he had built a small Main Street grocery store into an international retailing, manufacturing and real estate company with assets of $224 million, sales of $553 million, and more than 18,000 employees. Monseigneur le Chancelier, c'est en considérant l'activité professionnelle de M. Stanberg que nous vous demandons de lui décerner le GAD honoris causa de docteur en administration. But such honors mark the closing stages of a man's career. By 1969, the business had grown too large for one man to control, and Sam Steinberg was ready to retire as president. As a result, the corporation was in trouble, worried about its future leadership and unclear about where it was going. has been uh, directed uh, by Sam Steinberg for, for some 50 years now, and the company has been built up around his leadership, and it's been built up uh, on the assumption that, uh, that nothing will happen to Mr. Sam Steinberg in, uh, for time in memoriam. If uh, anything did happen, uh, th we would be faced with a catastrophic situation, of, uh, in my opinion, of, uh, of the most serious nature. I put number one in, I put succession as number one because of this catastrophic situation that would result. I think that everything else would pale by comparison in the event of something happening to, to the president. Again, there's a question of definition of succession. Succession, in my opinion, is the steps that have to be taken now so that in the event of the president retiring, or if, uh, God forbid, something catastrophic happened, uh, the, uh, there's a, a natural order of things come into play. And, uh, and this is the, the reason that I this see it. This is the reason, is the reason I, so I see it as number one. I think what we're, com I think what we're coming to, Mr. President, I think what we're coming to is a, a realization that there's a sufficient difference of opinion in the group. In early 1969, the president asked senior executives for their views on the problems facing the company. And in February, the management committee met to consider their reports. Succession was the key issue, but it was not the only one. Many saw this as an opportunity to radically restructure the company and shift a great deal of the power of the presidency into the hands of senior executives. Others, including the president, argued that neither succession nor structure could be decided until the company's goals and objectives were clarified. The outcome of this argument would determine the agenda for a three-day top management conference at Palomino, the company lodge. How can you start with all these objectives before you know did a stop management well, The way I look at it is this, that I think it's much easier to determine the kind of succession you want after you look at what you're reaching out for and how you're going to go about attaining it. But Mr. Sam... Then it follows you... Then it follows uh, what competence you require now. But we always talk about pie in the sky. We always talk about goals, but we never talk about how we're going to operate to meet those goals. And we don't start with the, 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 the 
crux of the matter of talking about the succession and talk on the structure and leadership and then put in goals that anybody here today could put goals this gone along everybody has a a, a a idea on goals then we again will leave palomino with no structure to monitor ourselves against the goals that we are set ourselves to go i think that the structure of a company has one singer overwhelming pur purpose and that is to facilitate the achievement of company goals and objectives i'm uh, i feel that we have not established our, our objectives and I think that's got to come first. Where are we going? What do we want to be? This is exactly how I feel. Now listen to what I'm telling each and every one of you. Evidently, over the past four or five weeks, a hundred or two hundred items have to be increased in price. Seventy-two items. All right. Well, I'm telling you what I heard. So. Seventy-two items. Okay. Let's let's say it's seventy-two items. So here's what happens. I meet one of our managers having lunch upstairs, who's a manager of St. Lawrence and Cremacy. I walked over and said, hello, how are you and everything else, how is it going? He says, very fine, sales are up 13 or 14 percent. But he says he's terribly disturbed. They got in a whole list of items that they have to increase the prices on. And he's disturbed because now they'll be going back to what they did in the past, erasing prices and putting on higher prices and everything else. Mr. President, look, uh, could I, no, could just could a minute. I, could I, when you wait a minute, Mr. President, look, this is, what, this is why I want to talk about structure first. It happens that I and you communicate twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, doesn't matter what time of day it is, eh? We right. communicate. I communicate to you, you communicate to me. And I brought up to you this perplexed thing, because I have to have somebody to speak to, too outside of my peers who we speak to, eh? So I communicate with this. Have you got the same problem in Toronto? Do you know what's happening in Toronto? No. Are you running one company or two companies? Is the structure that's wrong? Is the professional management wrong? Is it the box wrong? How do you communicate? They communicated, listen to this, and I, uh, this is why I say structure is so important on how we're going to do it and feedback and control. They've been raising prices from the first week. We kept prices back four weeks, we did, though we got a co cost increases. Four, three, four weeks ago, three weeks ago, so forth, we kept it back four weeks. They've been, uh, every week, putting in the price changes, though they come in the same problem with, they discuss it with you? No. Are they communicated with you? No. Are they communicating with anybody here? How many companies are you running? What philosophy do you want? That's why my first thing on page six, page six, and I want you to go back and read it. This is exactly, I'm, I'm very glad you brought it up. Because verse six I say, for God's sake, the objective and goals and corporate philosophy and the objectives and goals must be spelled out. What is your goals for it? Are you running one business? Are you still running a, an Ontario business? Do you want to be the general manager here? Or do you want to act as the president? Do you want to act as a corporate, as a corporate president for everybody or for one? That's a very exactly the same I'm bringing you. Could I bring this back on course? That, uh, I, I bring it right back on course and say, let's get right back to the problem of making maximum use, best use of our time. And I don't think that this kind of interchange has contributed. Well, I think Jack has raised a good example. Yeah, very good example. A good example. That's the whole purpose of all our exercises. We're never going to run our business right. right. I think Jack has given an excellent example of like the shortcomings yes. in the, in the all structure. All right, all right. Before having the goal. That's right. It's all how you interpret it. But I thought Jack gave an excellent example excellent. of the shortcoming of not having clear, un clear right. understanding. That's the way in terms of Yeah, that's right. And you first have to have the structure in order to do it. All right, Mel has the floor. Obviously, gentlemen, inherent in each of our reports, although we don't state it in negative terms, we're all trying to look at what the deficiencies have been, what they are, and how we're going to correct them. This is what everyone really wants to do deep down. Absolutely. Nobody's saying, look, so-and-so is incompetent. We might think it, each of whoever they think is incompetent or degrees of competence and so on, but that is secondary at the moment because we're not now evaluating individuals. All we are saying is that the sum total of everything that has been done, in one way or the other, has not been satisfactory. So we're trying to change. Now, if we had a structure that certain types of policies must be cleared 
and spelled out to the nth degree prior to implementation and a consistent follow-up in discussion on these policies in all divisions, not only the Quebec division, the same applies to Ontario, everywhere else, then these things wouldn't happen. So they'd be prevented from occurring. But it's no use telling Jack right now, don't you raise these prices, because for two weeks the president was away, and there's 4,000 other items that are happening simultaneously, and it's physically impossible for any one individual to consistently follow up and check and get clearance. Therefore, I submit that from my understanding, and maybe it's limited, that unless we clearly spell out, which is a far less arduous task, the organizational structure and how we make decisions and how the reporting relationship will function to permit these things to happen, once that's cleared, then we're going to spend a year, if need be, on spelling out the objectives. Now, if you say objectives is just broadly that we want to maintain a profit, we want to reverse our trend, who is against that? We, that we can resolve in 10 or 15 minutes. So I say that we leave objectives until the other thing is settled. The argument over objectives versus structure was resolved at last by the president reading a statement of company philosophy. With that, objectives disappeared from the Palomino agenda. At Palomino itself, a new and critical stage in the life of the company was to begin. Ultimate power would remain in the hands of Sam Steinberg through his control of the company's voting shares. But his authority and operating control were about to be redistributed. That was something which, in one way or another, touched the ambitions of almost everyone taking part in the conference. The need to revise the present structure is perhaps the most agreed upon problem identified by those submitting reports. A number of different assumptions are made about the need to reorganize at the top level. For example, no business boasting annual sales of half a billion dollars can afford to be so organized that in the absence of the chief executive, no one knows who is in control. The conference was chaired by the corporation's director of organizational development, Harry Suffren. The agenda consisted of four items, decision making, professional management, succession and structure. The most important point is that everyone recognizes a need for a new look into this structure. Your task, gentlemen, based upon your reading of the organizational report submitted to the president, the pre-reading provided for you and the discussion outline, determine the senior management structure of Steinberg's Limited, taking into consideration the decision-making process, the implementation of the decision, the relationship of senior management to the rest of the organization, the integration of the visional organizations, and the functioning of the corporation. Now, how do you wish to proceed? The suggestion was made to me during... These were the formal channels in which discussion would flow. But what underlay the discussion and gave it impetus was the fact that Sam Steinberg was stepping down as president to become chairman of the board. I just wanted to go over what I had put down. Now, we have a chairman of the board and a president at the present time. And Not all the senior executives present could hope to replace him. Some, like Oscar Plotnik, vice president of the Ontario Division, were approaching retirement themselves. Others, like John Parry, vice president of personnel, or Irving Ludmer, in charge of expansion and development, were too recently with the company, or too specialized in their skills, to be more than remote contenders. Attention focused on four people. Arnold Steinberg, Sam Steinberg's nephew, a Harvard Business School graduate and Vice President Administration. James Doyle, the corporation's widely respected Vice President and General Counsel. Mel Dobrin, the President's son-in-law and Executive Vice President Retailing, currently in charge of the Department Store Division. And Jack Levine, Vice President of the Quebec Division, the corporation's largest and most profitable retail division. But for everyone in the room, as important as the question of who was to be president, was the question of how much power he should have, and how much he should share with other senior executives. This was the essence of the debate over structure. Only one man could have the top job, but the right kind of structure before he was appointed would guarantee others significant power. Now one of the barriers we have, and everybody in the committee has said consistently, is that the food business 
we're, we're not getting the mileage out of our food business because we're running two different kind of food businesses and not together. And there's efficiencies. So I put the, 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 uh, all the retail food business under one man. Various structures were proposed. Most contentious was the suggestion that the corporation's existing divisions be regrouped under two or three executive or group vice presidents. They would be powerful enough to have a significant influence over any future president. But every division already reported to someone in the room. Increased authority for two or three people might seem like demotion for the rest. At this point, the common interest in decentralizing authority from the president might come into conflict with individual ambitions. Now, I'm saying, this is my assumption. Maybe other people and the regroupings may be done differently. But definitely, this is the, the thing that I'm subscribing to with these two and the, and the functions. No, but uh, I'm still confused. Sorry if I'm not all. Okay. okay. I'm looking at your chart, and uh, I felt that, uh, as I said, I started out to say the cobwebs had somewhat lifted. And when I look at this chart, so to speak, and looking at it from your point of view, I see Vice President Quebec, Ontario, Manufacturing, Private Label, Market Research. Now, are we saying that the Vice President of my Quebec division is the Vice President over the Vice President of Quebec and Ontario division? Yes, I'm telling you, one Vice President is responsible for all of it. So they have a man, and you'll have a man, Responsible. Have a vice president in Quebec. Yeah. If you a vice president in Ontario. I don't care. Names. We have another vice president in charge of all of these three operations. Besides, you've added a couple uh, of others. Now we said the purpose of this meeting is that we arrive at some understanding that removes barriers, that makes it more uh, practical and more efficient to operate. Now you can call yourselves all vice president, but one vice president is different to the other vice presidents without saying what that is. I didn't care what name it was. It was general manager, it was a, a vice president. I said, what are the natural groupings? I, I said, if I was starting off from scratch, what would I do? I'd give names a later date. I said, these are the natural groupings in order to get the best efficiency out of the organization and the assets we go. Based on that efficiency, I grouped them together. There is nothing inherently wrong in one vice president reporting to another other than the fact that it might right, cause but then confusion the, but in then somebody's uh, uh, mind. Uh, uh, but if we want Jim, to overcome it... Listen to me, first. Jim. Listen, stay there for a minute. I'm not, I'm not saying no, I'm just a, I'm fully aware of what's happening. But are we saying that the vice president in charge of Quebec division is going to act in a dual capacity? No. No, no. 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 Well, it doesn't show oh, he, anything he's here. He's not it been does. talking about whether there was a vice president in charge of Quebec division. He is saying there is a Quebec division there and there is yeah. an Ontario division there and somebody is over the two of them. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. what is really the, you know, it's, it's no difference well, really. Difference, the main thing is yeah. you accept but it. But I, I, I don't accept it because uh, I think that the, um, uh, I know we're imposing, uh, you know, these uh, executive vice president on the president. Maybe uh, the next president may not want executive pri vice presidents. I don't know, but all I know, I mean, I feel right now is that what we are, what is being suggested by A and B, they're the same. They're the same. If they're the same, and the two on. men agree, I say that there'll be no different than the way we're operating today. The point is this: Are you going along with it? Do you think that'll be helpful to us? Yeah, to I'll say that there's, that there's too many people. Too many people are going to be answering to the president, and the president will not be able under under, under uh, this there'll plan. Be fewer five, people. Fewer. There'll be fewer people if you have group vice presidents. No, we're going to have uh, fewer four. people than he would so now yeah. have. Then the man couldn't be in charge of a group of various. I'm talking about the people answering to the president. Eleven now. There'll be fewer people. You're going to have to. You know something? Can I say something? Can I say something? Can I say something? Can I say something? All the areas now report to all the people in this room. Look, Look, let me just let me just add this. You're talking about the president, a man who doesn't exist at the present time. But now you're going to start talking about yourself. You know, right now... In all our previous discussions, and we had some before we came up here to Palomino, we thought uh, it was impressed on us, and many individuals raised the point that we should be trying 
difficult as it is for all of us to be objective about what we said in these reports and to think of the organization not in terms of the incumbents in any one position but as to how the organization itself should be best structured from the point of view and worry about the bodies to fill the positions afterwards and that is what if we're going to be objective we should be doing here and we're dodging the issue because we're saying ah it might possibly point the finger at any one of us and that's a too delicate area for us to discuss you know what i think oh, i think he's going to i think i think we're getting chicken yeah we all had enough nerve gumption look at the company and say to our present president in writing look mr president you have to reorganize because we have certain weaknesses that if we don't do this the company is not going to move along with somebody else everybody in this room was willing to do it when it comes to individually, you want to check it out because you may have to exactly. give and you may have to take. It just seems to me that, that while there, there may be some benefits from the exercise, I really see that for the most part, we will go through the, the exercise. It'll take several hours, maybe several days. We will have a very heated discussion. It's inconceivable to me that it can be resolved without a heated discussion. Mm -hmm. And then the whole thing could be a complete waste of time because of the of the of the relationship between the chairman and the president and how they see well, the job i disagree like i, I like listen when a man well, is made the chief executive officer and i'm just using the president by way of example then he's going to determine the kind of a structure that he can operate with effectively in order to achieve the desired goals you say to him we'll make you president but this is the way you're going to have to operate uh, but we have we have we have a, I think a responsibility as a group to put this kind of recommendations on the board the same way as we did other recommendations rather than leave it again for a haphazard uh, uh, putting together without the resources to put together or call another meeting for that purpose. Oh. I know you're speaking, I recognize I, I think uh, traditionally the President of the United States or the Prime Minister in under the parliamentary system alone chooses his own cabinet and for the most part the choice of cabinet depends on the skills of that of the particular individual. I think it was obvious that under Kennedy uh, he chose a very weak Secretary of State because he himself wanted to be the Secretary of State. Um, uh, I think that to uh, for a, a, a president to come on into the job uh, without this choice uh, being made by him I think puts him at a, at a very serious disadvantage. Also, right, you build into it. Yeah. Yeah. Far, I would far uh, sooner uh, see you done. Uh, man, I'm like more sorry for him as a president. You imagine the story told to me by Hoke Simpson. Most of you know him. He was now speaking to a student who took the six-week advanced course after the six-week year He said, how do you feel now? And the student replied, Mr. Simpson, when I came here, I was confused. But now I'm still confused, but at a much higher level. <laughs> <laughs> Are you confused, Mr. President? No, no sir. Good. All right, to help. Let me tell you, I'm very pleased uh, the way we're progressing with this. Thing. All right. D? Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I must say that there is a time to disagree, and this is what we're doing in the present time. But I must say, though, that as soon as a decision is made which is considered to be in the best interest of the company, Guy Normani won't resent being demoted if this is called demotion, and he will be prepared to pull in the same direction as other people. All right. <coughs> you have a legitimate floor. I knew we would get at some point of this kind of contention, and uh, uh, I was willing myself to take that risk and stand about to the job that I will be allocated to to my ability based on the evaluation of my present superior, which happens to be Sam Steinberg. I think that if we don't look at the barriers and put It'll ourselves... Be on, up in Siberia if it was up to me. <laughs> then I'll That's go. That's where you'll put them. When I put these things out, I feel deeply about the organization okay. and where it's going and where it should go. And I'm willing to subject my own personal goals at this point, though I have personal goals, to the good of welfare of the organization. 
So I am not looking at jobs or job descriptions or job titles. What would be best for the company, I'm prepared to do. That was always good. understood. Very good. And nobody Irving, knows that better than me. I think that the groupings that are made are really the prerogative of the chairman and whoever he nominates to be the president. And those groupings I only want to submit must be made on two bases. <coughs> and I don't know if we can go much deeper with it over here. And that is this. Number one is what is a natural grouping business-wise. And the number two is the competence in the, of the people available in the judgment of the chairman and his president. And that will obviously have to determine to some degree the groupings, but fundamentally based upon the uh, natural groupings that are available to us. But I think that uh, beyond that, you have to take people into account and into consideration, and we, we should leave here ready to say that whatever these people deem to be in the best interests of the corporation, that this is what we will have to go along with. And that's it. I don't think that we can go beyond that point. I think that uh, you, just like Gee and just like Jack before you, said now whatever is finally decided, uh, this is what the, you're going, you're prepared to go along with, and I think that's very nice. Here. Dinner was a family affair, with Mrs. Sam Steinberg supervising the cooking and waiting on table. The business had been a family affair from the beginning, built by Sam Steinberg and his four brothers from the small grocery store their mother had opened in 1917. Where is he? Switzerland. No, but where? What you doing there? Well, no, he's, not in, he's not in a French school. Uh, in a but its growth had created needs the family could no longer supply, both in numbers of senior executives and in specialized professional skills. Outside professionals like James Doyle, the corporation's vice president and general counsel, now sat on the management committee alongside Morris and Nathan Steinberg, two of the president's three surviving brothers. Sam Steinberg had no sons, but a nephew, Arnold Steinberg, was on the management committee, as was one of the president's four sons-in-law, Mel Dobrin, the executive vice president retailing, and at least one grandson, was already being given a glimpse of the action. Morris, you want a little salad? Yes, sir. She's, uh, she's on this tween program. Sunday. She's picked from her school, you know. Thank you. The continuing dominant role of the family and the feeling that this would unduly influence the choice of a new president were matters of concern throughout the company. Concern which underlay the apparently contented family atmosphere at dinner. I got more now than the first time. Does she deserve a kiss for that? Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Look, it's on camera. We're on camera. Go to it. Oh. <laughs> the family problem surfaced in the discussion of professional management. The many barriers to professional management were first listed on sheets of newsprint. They included such problems as poor decision making and bad interdivisional relations, as well as family organization. There has to have been a certain degree of professional management. And for its time, and the time in which we've been we have been successful, I think we have to recognize a certain professional competency, if you like. Now, uh, somebody mentioned intuition. And I say that in any company that's ever going anywhere and succeeding, you must have a high degree in your top management of intuitiveness or at least an understanding of what the company can do best and can succeed best at doing. And this, I think, in the past we had. But very largely, I think this was based on the talent and judgment of our president and partly because of his strong convictions, his personality, and the rest, we have tended perhaps to be more followers than leaders. Doesn't per se mean that as individuals we lack the talents, 
No. Or the aptitude to no. be professional manager. We're lacking an integrated approach. This is the, the That's way. Right. An integrated. We're, we're lacking a team, approach. a team approach. The way we operate is unprofessional. That's it. This is what he's saying. Yeah. It doesn't I mean that we lack professional. That's right. It doesn't follow that we lack professional skill. Well, look, we've been passing a lot of platitudes uh, up to now. I don't think that uh, we're leveling all that much. And I think that by taking these <laughs> barriers... Speak for yourself. Well, I am speaking for myself, and uh, I think that uh, in, if we yeah, took these barriers... you're not leveling. Don't all right, I'll say I'm not, not leveling, because i got okay. a lot more that I haven't even come close to saying so yet. Then say you're not. And I will. All right, so I say that if, to start it off, why don't, we get, why don't we take the barriers, as Oscar just suggested, and say we have a whole bunch of stuff listed. that uh, These are the reasons why we're not a professional uh, company. Eh? We don't run a professional managerial style. So let's take these things and let's put them on the table. I would like to suggest that we do this one and let's one. hear why people have suggested them and why they feel and what things they're referring to. And I don't think we should defend the, any of these things. I don't think the objective is to come and say, well, you know why we did this was because we had that. I think we should just bring out and let the people say why they feel these things were suggested. And I think we're going to learn more about what's wrong than uh, we would in any other manner. Yeah, that was a good suggestion, actually. The that we barriers. look at uh, barriers to professional you, you want to go into barriers? Yes, I would. I think it is a good well, suggestion. Well, right. good yeah. 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 Absolutely. We're on barriers now. I so, think so. there's been a number of very major decisions which have been taken. Uh, there seems to be an assumption that there's uh, an eternal tap that we turn on and the cash just flows out. And frankly, uh, unfortunately, we're at a stage where just the reverse happens to be true, where there is no more cash. And unless we, we follow these events very closely, we could find ourselves in serious trouble. Let me give you another example. We, at the present time, have $4 million invested in the restaurant business. $4 million. There was never a decision made to invest anything like that kind of money by any one individual. I doubt, frankly, that anyone in this room even knew we had $4 million invested in the restaurant business. And that doesn't include the buildings. This is, I'm, I'm talking just about the leasehold improvements and the equipment and the inventories, four million dollars. Now that was no planned decision, and yet it somehow, with the loose kind of organization we have, we find ourselves at the beginning of 1969 with a four million dollar investment, and we will lose this year something like four hundred thousand dollars in that business. Well, Arnold, that particular type, of, you've, you've I'm given just an, giving example, an example of the barriers. You have because given an example that I was going to cite myself as a combination of A, one-to-one -one decision making, and B, and F, family organization. Because if ever there was an example of the family and one-to-one -one decision making getting us in a spot, that is it. As every, uh, certainly Bill knows this, and I'm, I'm sure Bill did it, and I did it, we were against this whole thing. We. I was most vociferously against it uh, in principle right from the start. I said, if we're going to go into this kind of an outside venture, let us go out and get the best possible people we can and let's not settle for any second best. Let's not go into the basis of buying a company that is already not making money but losing money. But there's a, a, a specific example of two barriers where the one-to-one -one decision making is made and at the same time it's the family organization when i say organization the family if you like pulling rank on the rest of the non-family executives in the corporation and saying well that's the way it's going to be and 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 in, in effect the non-family part of the business had absolutely nothing to say about that and what they did say was absolutely ignored I want to keep on this kind of because it's, uh, I think we're getting some feelings out. For three, four, five years, Mel and I have been saying very clearly, yearly, we used to do it yearly, that the organization being built at corporate was much too heavy for our retail kind of operation that we're into. And we just talked against the wind. As we talk, it grew bigger. And as we talk, it grew bigger. And it, this cost us time and money and competitiveness because of this one kind of act. And we couldn't make any change. We had no power. I had no power to make any change. Mel didn't have the power because I know Mel yelled as much as I did. No power. Now, where is there an organization responsibility and a function of a management in order to take this kind of view into fact and see if we can afford what we're building? 
never was. Is that is that making manage professional management as a professional manager and exercising decision making? I think we, we no, fail. about that, Jack, which what you're saying implies that there was duplication. It was unnecessary building. Isn't Absolute, that what's implied? Yes. Absolutely. But surely the corollary to that is that the duplication existed at the cor at the division level. You're saying that the division level had to have it and corporate didn't. Well, but surely in, in a discussion, and which is now coming out in the in, in work that Bill's group is doing, they're discovering that the duplication is in fact taking place at the division and the real need is at corporate. I mean, all but, I'm saying, Jack, is that in fact I agree that duplication exists. But I know. Well, but you're assuming that that duplication is at corporate and not at the division. But, but corporate started to build up immaterial that was at the division. Now, where should it be? Maybe just maybe because there in are corporate? people at corporate who say that the division grew up not even though it was at the corporate. Oh, Jack, I'm agreeing that someone okay. should have sat down. Right, that's all I'm but saying. Both sides, okay. in fact, are well, saying the same thing. That decision to the point that rationally. Right. That's right. Would you please speak one at a time? And I think professionalism can start right here, the way we conduct the meeting. Too many meetings in the past have been unprofessional and that problems in an unorganized manner have been tossed on the table, philosophies are spewed out. So professional in the meeting means identifying the problem, moving from there to different means of solving them, and this is where we fall flat on our backs again and again, is not nailing down who is to do what and when and how. If you want to turn this thing into the fish market, gentlemen, it's your meeting. But Look, Harry, I, I, I want to stop and critique what you're saying and what you're Go doing. Go ahead. I'm saying that at least if you don't get out feelings on this table today and Monday and Tuesday, we'll all go back and say what we, we should have said and we didn't say, and it's the feelings that count. It's the, the commitment one feels inside that counts. It's not words and it's not, it's the deeds and the feeling and the commitment we have to this organization to be better tomorrow and today. And I, for one, am objecting to your system and method of monitoring because I'm not doing this for a mental exercises. I'm doing this much more. There's much more at stake than a mental exercise. And I don't want that kind of monitoring from you. But I my, want some my, heat to come out. I want some feeling to come out. And I want these things to come out so that when you go away, we know we have done the job thoroughly and we understand our job to do. So we all mm. go back and do the job together, not disjointedly and not feeling that we haven't been heard and seen and felt and put the things well, we feel on the well, table. Well, when I started out the meeting, I said, each one of you in your report, there must be something that you feel. And we recognize that. And this is one of the reasons we're here. So if there are in those, those items that you consider uppermost that you reduce to writing you and felt free to say so, what is uppermost in your minds that you feel it has a restraining influence, I think it should, like Jack said, brought out, Absolutely. freely spoken. Well, I, I, uh, to I the extent that we think it's pretty well covered by what's already been said, then we move forward. Harry, I would like to deal with a barrier that has been talked about uh, by many people Yes. One which I, I'm, I, I guess, particularly sensitive to, and that has to do with number F, family organization. Uh, I think there is implied in many, if not most, of the submissions that, that deal with professional management and leadership, and I think all of them pretty much do, the idea that most or all of the members of the family would prefer working in an organization <coughs> where professional management takes a secondary role to nepotism or, 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 fa or family preference. And in this area, I, I can obviously only speak for myself, but I think I'm speaking for, for most, if not all, of the second generation family members when, when I state that, ne that ne nepotism generates sa satisfaction to any particular individual for a very short period of time. And then in the long run, uh, career satisfaction <coughs> of an individual uh, well, let me put it differently, that, that when nep nepotism plays an important role in the choice of an individual for management, the satisfaction that comes from that is very short-lived to any particular individual who is, thinks of himself in a management capacity. And I think, as I say, I speak, well, I know I speak only for, for myself. In fact, I suspect that I'm voicing the opinion of all, if not most, of the members of the family. Now, uh, uh, the only comment I would like to make at this, mon uh, this moment was that I read a Harvard report 
where it deals with families and organizations. All right. All right. So it tells you that after a period of 20 years, there's more families than ever before, and it hasn't affected the performance as I read it in these companies. On the other hand, I think that when we look around the table over here, we talk about family. Well, I looked upon Jack as a member of the family. I look upon uh, Oscar as a member of the family. I've looked upon Jack Ginzer always as a member of the family. And I think that they look upon themselves as a member of the family. So and that's not a very good example. Your definition of family and everyone else's I know, but will you please listen to me? I'm just giving you by way of example because he started right at the very beginning with us. No, no, but now let's go to the next step. Unless let's take where people, let's say blood relations. That's better. No, we'll go to the next step, regardless. The next step, blood relations. Wherever the man could not measure up, or we had somebody more competent in the job, the person that was most competent got it. But to say that if a member of the family is in the firm who has the competence and he can't be considered because he's a member of the family is wrong. But there's not the family, though. Yeah. I'm not no, I'm not talking. Well, I'll talking. tell you, I just want to comment a little on this because... Uh, I've had a lot of uh, people uh, come to me and talk to me about this, because maybe because, uh, you know, I'm a little younger and only joined the company uh, some 11 years ago and uh, went through all this. And in my case, obviously, it was no great deterrent for me. But uh, let me just say this, that uh, there is an awareness in, the in many of the people in the company that there is such a thing as an informal organization at Steinberg's, which is directly linked to the family. And there's an informal organization perhaps in every company, but this one happens to be directly linked to the family, to the point where they're, uh, they're, if you're sitting among a group of peers, that the fact, and, the, and I'm going to level here and tell you that the standard joke is that the key decisions are not made at the management committee or with the president, but at Friday night supper. And this in itself is very indicative because I'm sure you've all heard the same uh, mm -hmm. expressions used. And it's very indicative as to how people see the organization, how they read it. So they don't see equality if one fellow happens to be vice president of this and another fellow vice president of that, and they're both putting forth their opinions. If one happens to be related, the feeling is that he's got an awful lot more to say, A, because he's much closer, B, it's sort of his money involved, and C, it's because he goes to the Friday night supper as opposed to the other party. And I think that this is the feeling among a lot of the people in the organization. They feel it definitely has hampered in the past. And I might add that uh, perhaps, uh, from my point of view anyways, it's probably less so now than it has been. And it's been very severe in the past, in my opinion. And I can tell you that there's a lot of people and they spend a lot of time talking about this stuff. A lot of time. And mm -hmm. so I think we have to recognize it and be aware of it. I just want to make I just want to ask you one question. Is it your charm or ability that got you where you are now? That's all I want to know. Good looks. <laughs> no. Got no, he attended the Friday night dinner. That's no. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, yeah, but to, to support everything that Irving is saying, uh, there is also, and I think Irving could, might comment on this, there's a sort of a another feeling around that uh, a certain amount of this has definitely been taken care of in a much better way in, in recent years with the appointment of other non-family people to very senior positions. But running along with that, wh whether we like to admit it or not, there are f there's one school of thought going around which sort of looks as us a little bit like the Negroes in the cabinet, you know, that really <laughs> were, were there more for show than for performance and that the real decisions are still made, as Irving says, in the, in the Friday night uh, meetings. Whether that has validity or not, that is what they believe. I don't, I don't think I need to answer that, but certainly Europe's never put on for show. Well, nepotism can actually exist, not only in family, but when a general manager in his own division can have nepotism not in his own family. Well, so nepotism does not only that's, exist that's still in, a, uh, in a family. The whole question of nepotism, in my opinion, is not really coming out on the table. In this sense, from what I gather, and, and it's maybe not right for me to, to bring it up, uh, but throughout the reports, throughout the reports, there is, if not 
written certainly between the lines. There is the, the, the obvious statement that this company has been ruled and is suffering badly as a result of nepotism. And frankly, I have a feeling that if a vote was taken by the people here, more people would vote in, in to the correctness of that statement than to the wrongness of that statement. I don't answer, say that. I don't say that. Uh, uh, answering, I think, some of the query, and you're pushing, I guess you're uh, rightly so. I think what uh, some of us said in our report was that uh, it's inconceivable that a decision of succession uh, would not be been uh, a size of our company, would not have been made that decision before now, if it wasn't with the dilemma of the family. We were talking about, how would you say, uh, I had the word on the tip of my tongue when you say franchise, but this, uh, I'll say, is this, I'll put it simpler. Does this rule out Arnold because he's a member of the no, family? No. 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 Well, of course I've got to make sure that I understand that clearly. He's a member of the we're family. We're coming to that. No, we're coming to that. What, are, we're not what are you asking? Come on. What is he asking? I'm not sure. I don't know what he's asking. Are you, are you doing something on your hand? Let me finish. Now, if the man can't be considered for the job because he's a member of the family, we better know the ground rules right at the beginning. A member of a family man. The idea of a professional manager and the idea of. I don't think one would define nepotism as saying that even where a member of the family is superior. Uh, or, or, the, or the lack of nepotism, I should say. Where I don't think the lack of nepotism means, or the non-existence of nepotism uh, implies, that even where a member of the family is suitable, and is, or is the most suitable candidate for the job, that it's not available to him. Well, if I understood Mr. Sam right, well, he was saying that uh, all things being equal, the member of the family would get the, the job. And I don't see that that's... This is I mean, it's almost right. like uh, seniority. I think the company in a position uh, that cautiously must make a decisions uh, that uh, everything being equal, the family member won't get it. You never are for, for, the never 19, equal. for the 19, for, for, for the 19th, for the 19th. That's very fair. That's very unfair. I think it'd be better for the company. That's a reverse prejudice. That's right. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. it isn't. Can I say, guys, sir? Listen, foremost in my mind has always been the person's ability to cope with his job. At the point when he was no longer able to measure up to that job, he was replaced, and that'll go all the years that we've been in business. Doesn't matter what that relationship happened to be. Now, however it's viewed from the outside, as long as I'm in the job, in any case, family will always be given consideration, but always subject to the person's ability to discharge that responsibility. We brushed over the Friday night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be in a position to say with conviction, look, the organ certainly the family discusses business when they get together, but the decisions are you made by the manager right, committee. We don't discuss business Friday night. Well, if you don't, I'm you surprised. Hear yourself start with my grandchildren <laughs> there. <laughs> well, I think Friday night is a sort of a... It's a word a for, speech, for family get And I, I think that the... The family hasn't met in years with reference to... I think, that. first of all, the president, if he wants to, but uh, I think it's up to him to say who meets on Friday night. Because uh, there, I there's, think a, I think there's a, the a feeling, or no, there's a statement that uh, the man management members here might think that 15 members of the family meet. I have been the only one there. Twelve of which are Is children. Is that correct? <laughs> I don't, I've never seen Arnold there. I've never seen Nathan there. I've never seen Morris there in the last five years. So, I, I don't uh, see how they I, mean, I don't know what they think. No, no, well, well, I don't need to have the family get together. This is true. One man, in my own person, have 100% control of this company. I don't have to ask anybody, so it's no use even talking about a discussion. There's no need for a discussion. I don't need anybody's approval. No, right. Well, no one is no one is is denying to you the prerogative of saying here I have two or three or four or five, however many people you have might have in mind as an ultimate successor. That you're going to be the person who is is going to make that decision. First, if it weren't for any other reason, it's because on strictly legal grounds, as you've just pointed out, you wouldn't have to ask anybody else. 
even on a, on a straight legal ground, you could say the hell with you if you felt so inclined. I'll make that decision personally, and, and everybody here knows that. But you being the kind of person you are, I think, are unlikely to make that decision, of a decision of that magnitude, without referring it to the family. But the fact is, if you're willing to accord then, because of the of family ties, the matter of discussion on a rational basis with the family, we think that it should be done on a rational basis also with your senior executives. That's why you're here today. Well, uh, Jim, that's yes. in view of the... Uh, we agree to adjourn at 9. I don't think it's much sense in starting the next item on the agenda, which is succession. With uh, your agreement, I suggest we adjourn here and now. Give us a good night's rest. We can come finish it off in 10 minutes. What's the <laughs> 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 You want to try it? Right? No, I won't. Huh? I think we'll all sleep on it. All right, we'll all sleep on it. All right, the meeting is adjourned till tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock when we will discuss succession. At Palomino, sessions ran late, but there was time before bed for a hand of bridge, an appropriate game for the last night of the conference. I think it's a great, great shame to let a man talk, play with his wife. Yeah, they kiss. They probably, they probably <laughs> played a lot of bridge together. <laughs> uh, I don't believe it. In bridge, a player may have two objectives. To win by making his contract, or to prevent the opposition from winning, which is another kind of victory. The game has rules which the players must observe if they want to play at all. But it also has conventions outside the rules, mainly the elaborate system of bidding by which players signal the strengths and weaknesses of their hands. Oh, I doubt <laughs> <laughs> Through bidding, a way has been found for players to say indirectly what the rules won't allow them to say openly. Get a report from the president. I've seen some of these reports on videos. And they're not. In the succession discussion which ended the Palomino conference, there were some who hoped to win and others who merely hoped to prevent someone else from winning. No participant could propose himself or criticize another candidate directly. So, more indirect ways had to be found of saying things which could not be said out loud. Succession procedure. There was very, very little that I could really say. I mean, from my point of view. Look at your hand. What do you count? Look at the cards. I love. To make matters worse, the exercise had to take place under the eyes of Sam Steinberg a man whom none of them could afford to offend and whose choice might already have been made. The test then is based on your reading of the organization reports submitted to the president, <coughs> the pre-reading provided and the discussion outline determine what procedures and criteria should be used for the selection of the chief officers. Now, on criterion and procedures, I thought you would find helpful, and you all have this in your kits, the extract from the... The method adopted was to describe an ideal candidate for the presidency. By proposing specific criteria, each member hoped to point towards the candidate he favored or away from those he did not. On one point, there was almost total agreement. The winner had to be someone in this room. I want you to listen me out for a minute. Right now, one of the largest organizations in our field have recently, as you all know, appointed a president. And from my point of view, it's a sorry spectacle. In an organization so vast, and with the years of experience and uh, 
you know how how large an organization that is. They're doing the business in the billions, and they have, this is what they have to end up with. So, uh, just trying to tell you that uh, we got to give serious consideration, and uh, just uh, I'm just exasperated to 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 think how I would have felt if I was uh, a substantial shareholder in that organization as to what they had to resort to in terms of a president. Are you really sorry about that? I no, think, no, I'm not. I, I think of Churchill's... This is for our own people. ...of Churchill's remarks that the Israeli secret weapon was the Arab ability to fight. <laughs> 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 one of our competitive advantages may be exactly that kind of appointment that our competitor. <laughs> what you're saying is we're trading on our competitor's ignorance and not on our skill and ability. Let right? our competitor <laughs> keep on hiring people of that ability. They're weak. You can see, you can <laughs> see the talent we possess <laughs> by Harry's <laughs> definition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking on you this morning. One I'd like to propose is that we may, may, it's made reference to in the uh, material you just read as well. I mean, the need to maintain a dynamic organization. And to do so implies that uh, this character has to be established at the top. So the, certainly the kind of individual who would give leadership to this organization ought to have a dynamic, forceful, initiating, and risk-taking qualities that are needed to ensure that dynamism is maintained. All right. Uh, he's saying uh, the attributes that could be dynamic. Did you say forceful, John? Forceful, initiating, and risk-taking. Dynamic, forceful, initiating, and risk-taking. As contrasted with mechanical, repetitive dulling with some backward-looking. The individual chosen should have proven, in the light of his past performance, uh, as is a dynamism, forcefulness, taking initiative, not risk taking. Bill? He should have a broad grasp of business in general and our business in particular. I think he should have a very outstanding record of his personal uh, philosophy and personal mode of living and all the rest of it that goes with it. You want to qualify what kind of philosophy? Well, I'm We're just saying, saying nine, nine. he's got to be rather clean living, let's put it that way. Clean living? <laughs> That's right. Well, That's not the words living? I'd like to <laughs> see going up on the paper. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pure blooded. <laughs> well, you know, what, what a red blood of the a little, 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 little Abner. You're trying to disqualify yourself for future. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to ask which one of us matches. <laughs> well, let let Irving make his point. Maybe the word. No, the, the word I'm enough. trying to make is. Not I don't want to mention exactly. names because we're on film here and everything else. But there are in examples in industry of leading industrialists who, uh, because of their own personal uh, uh, meanderings or difficulties or what have you, are just not running their industries. They get in that position and then they start fooling around. Maybe they don't start fooling around until they get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Oscar. Irving, you hear what you're saying? What are I saying? High personal standards of ethics and morality. Well, well that's do it. That's it. <laughs> no problem. I, mean, I think yeah. I'd knock out clean living. It's, it's <laughs> I mean, the accepted, accepted as a leader by his peers. Really mm -hmm. Accepted as leader by his peers. Does this man exist this item heaven? No. Nope. Sam Steinberg. You want to read? <laughs> 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 every every 
Study it carefully and see why you're not receiving you. I mean, we'll get a genius from And that right uh, now, I'm right. the only guy that fits. And one more <laughs> statement, and I'll be out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> right. Harry, I think he's got to be um, hungry in the sense that, not food-wise, but in the sense that the man w must feel Motivate. an urgency, a motivation, and so on, to, no to build the business, improve the business, and so on. So does capture hungry, Irving? Yeah, it does, I guess. Hungry Dynamic. for success. Some ten years ago, I met a chap who was in my class in public school. And he said to me, that at one time, the kids got together, and the person that they singled out who was least likely to succeed was me. This is what he told me. <laughs> That's a fact. And the other was, I was telling some of the boys, uh, oh, some about uh, 30 years ago, there was a Liberty magazine. And they had an article, of the new sciences that were being introduced in terms of selecting uh, people for employment in the organization. And they had a point system. And they'd rate them on the years of education, the years of experience, and the various qualifications added up, and he'd have to have a certain point rating to, in order to get a job. <coughs> so finally, after uh, three or four pages of this, when it comes to the end of the uh, story, the editor was asked, or the person was asked, well, what about the fellow who doesn't qualify at all? He said, well, you don't have to worry about him. He'll end up being the boss. <laughs> so evidently, this happens to be the story of my life. Uh, well, the point I'm trying to make is it doesn't always follow uh, that a uh, person must have all of these qualifications to, uh, to be able to perform. I think what we want to do is to, in a sense, direct our own destiny. And it goes back again to the story that my father tells of picking only six footers. If you're going to train people to play basketball, only start with six footers because at least you know you're not going to. You, you, now that doesn't mean you can't get a four foot uh, basketball player who could be good. But why take uh, why take the chance? You might as well train a six footer to start with. Your, your chances of success. But I think that Arnold is trying to make an exception. a good point. He's yeah. making of a very good point. Can't go by the exception. Right. Okay. So I agree. We're trying to eliminate. Don't buy that. The, the only the message is that the man assumes that it's Truman. <coughs> or whether it's Trudeau, how the man changes when he assumes office and changes in some direction. The reason that Warren was so good was he was a retailer, you see, and that's why. Uh, <laughs> no, but the, the <laughs> point, Harry, Harry, you, you, you've, thrown, you've thrown something on the, on the table there which I think has a disturbing effect. What you're really saying is there's no sense in going up through all this because the job changes the man such that it goes out the window anyway. And this we don't want. No, 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 because he's chairman. We've already agreed that the candidates for any of these key assignments are those who are best qualified. Whether these individuals are in the organization or outside the organization, that we shouldn't close our eyes to the possibility that uh, more qualified people meeting these candidates, meeting these criteria better than in, in our internal resources. Are you saying to look both inside and outside the organization? Yeah. I, I, I'm saying we shouldn't exclude looking outside the organization if necessary, if we've, and trying to find the right candidate. That's kind of a negative expression of a procedure, though, isn't it? Well, surely, well, surely, 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 surely you should look inside to see if sure. there are people No, who I don't think. agree. I think that uh, looking inside would be myopia. I think we ought to look beyond uh, at the same time. Here's a statement that I think is worth considering anyway. Promotion of internal personnel into key executive assignments without regard to the qualifications of those outside the organization who may be of superior, superior caliber can result in promoting mediocrity. The best qualified man for a key position may not be available in the firm and therefore a sounder approach would oh, be to look outside. Right. 
Well, no, they are. may not be available. Uh, this may be a particular, particularly necessary when the decision is made to go into new business and so forth. Furthermore, when promotion from within has been a long-established practice, the risk is increased that the vitality of the organization will become sapped and those promoted tend to imitate their bosses rather than introduce no. new ideas. Now, now, you, that, you, said you, you spoke of when you're going into a new business too. Now, how much qualification? Well, the words when not available, I think. Well, 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 can I finish? Well, I'll tell you why I don't agree. Because it sort of indicates to your people that if this is your attitude, striving for excellence in this way, then what happens every time you have a job through your organization, if you want better, you can always find better. Nobody here is the best in his capacity in the world, I guarantee you, or even in North America. And that's from Sam Steinberg right through every job here. So then people say, well, what's the use of working and everything else? Because I can't seem to better myself. They always find a guy in Alabama, and then they come with a fellow from Washington, and so on and so forth. And you never really build a culture and a sort of family, quotation marks, into your well, organization. There's a lot of I mean, there's no question, John, that we could find someone more capable than anybody in this company. Well, any for any standing, for any position in the company, for any position that you have, uh, have, have put your own people into, if you went outside, you would have gotten better people. For every job that's ever been filled in this company, we could have found better people if we went outside. Did it long enough, hard enough, we would have found better people. I don't know. I don't know how many more people in this industry are better than we as a group. Well, I think what Arnold was saying here... Now he added the group, you see. Yeah, the yeah, professor thing, uh, the pro I'm looking at uh, from an academic point of view, Jack, okay. I think if we searched the world, we'd find someone better. Yeah. Okay, I okay? I think what Arnold was saying, saying here... Every job one searches the world. Okay. But they're, they're, it's impractical, and I'm not sure it's the best possible approach I to running a company. The, the can I say something? Yeah, well, I want to say sorry. something, uh, harking back to the role <laughs> I play as a professor and a rabbi and so on. Interesting <laughs> 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 Sam over here. This is, I give you part of my personal style of feedback, that's much of yours. Uh, but the point is, uh, uh, Levitt, in his book on managerial psychology, if you haven't read it, I recommend it highly to you. He's now talking, he's saying where we go through problem solving, talking about the best solution, he's now saying that this is a lot of crap in academic words. He's saying, in effect, he gives the example of a man looking for a used car. And he says, the man in Montreal is not going to reply and investigate every single used car. Nor is he going to visit every single used car lot in Montreal. He says the guy would take a lifetime to do it. So he now says that you pick a satisfying solution, as he calls it. That is one which meets the needs of the time and the best one that you come up with in these circumstances. I now withdraw from my role as professor or rabbi and become chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't the risks be a lot greater, actually, to, if this were to be the case, to hire well, somebody I from tell outside? You, I've observed in our industry where they found it necessary to seek any outside, and I've had a series of presidents changing over like you churn butter that's right. well, that's when colonial, they go outside. Colonial. I can name any number when they went outside. It was just like you know, turning butter. One the only time I see that happen, where the financial interests as forced. such, forced. That, that's right, forced, otherwise uh, they lose their shirt. Like Safeway with McGowan at that time. They tr first that's tried to go within. All I'm really tradition. saying is the, the thought be given to the possibility that there are superior qualifications outside the company. I didn't have a statement on the board. Seek out best men bearing criteria in mind. Look, and where you're divided is, is it first out, first inside and then outside, or are you looking at one shot everywhere? I think this is the question which you have to resolve. We all agree, except John, we look inside. Yeah, that's right. Any further suggestions, steps on procedure? My conviction is, but it's not only uh, this group that is concerned, the group below us are very, very concerned about the leadership function of the company and the, talk, and the position we're talking about. They have certain assumptions of certain people that they would not want to be associated as a leader. And we must take their opinions into consideration when we deliberate. You don't think that the people no. in this room reflect the opinion? properly reflect in their discussions with the president the views of the people below them? I did. I did. I did in my doctrine. But well, you're saying I do. I do. I do. I do. Okay. I do too. I don't think. 
Anything can be served by the president running around and asking, no, okay. soliciting I opinions. I think with the best. I think, I, think, I, think I, stand I stand corrected. Not I can't. Okay. And I would say the president should do it. I would. No, I would. Okay. I would I like. Stand, I stand corrected. Well, I think the significant thing is that each person in this room be free to advance his own feelings directly and privately to the president. So that the president gets a feedback of what everyone back, here back, feels back. about his peers without my having to say, I don't think Sam Gerstel should get the job out on the table. That's right. <laughs> I would say that. No, he doesn't really mean that. Sammy. I don't mean that. He didn't mean it. I think he'd make a pretty it. good president. Sammy, he didn't mean it. No. Sammy, you put in years, you put in. Look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one shot, it's all wiped out. <laughs> Knocked out the first ballot. <laughs> That's a hypothetical example, Sam. A bad You're choice. You're my secret a bad candidate. choice. <laughs> bad choice. <laughs> shows you the, shows you the man's judgment. Eh? It will be helpful to you. It's not in order to compulsory the that you speak to all the right, right. You the can't. You can't the that. The statement we have up there is the president at his discretion will consult with members of his management group and I think in part the President already has conveyed this, that any one of you should feel free to see him on this man. That's right. All right? I don't you know, I don't those two are not compatible in my mind. This is why I raised the question. Obviously, if he consults, say, with the first three people there, and he never consults with the next three, the next three, if they find out that he's consulted with the first three, are not going to feel very free to go in and voluntarily on their own offer any opinions. Funny, I wouldn't hesitate. I think we've got a, a kind of an, a relationship here, that uh, whether it's up there or not. And I, I, well, I had something to say. I'm my to. mind that I don't know of anybody here who would be, yeah. wouldn't feel free to would come and talk to me when they think it's... Well, a, I never uh, have yet. What? I never <laughs> have yet. <laughs> I think that's your answer. Any further suggestions on procedure? I don't think we can go much further and personal selection is a one alone uh, responsibility. So this becomes with all the information. But you're telling presence. me you've made it very easy for me. We made it very clear to you what kind of person we want. As, as right. easy as we can. That's right. As hard as we can. We've made it very easy for you. We've narrowed the choice down to 15 people. Yeah. What better can you expect than that? I mean, all 15 are candidates in here. We made it simple. Could have been a choice of a thousand. Fifteen. Are we going to talk about time dimension here? Or? No. Yeah, I, I think we I should. Don't mind Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't mind. Let's get everything now. Will you expand that, John? I, mean, I think that over this, what period of time this decision will like be state. taken period maybe three to six months. Not sooner. Three to six months. That's right. You're saying it'll be at the earliest three months, the la at the latest six, six months, months, or at, at the I earliest three to six months? Yeah. That's, you put it well. Yeah. At the earliest three months, at the latest uh, six. In my opinion, that's too long, but uh, I think that uh, the organization as a whole is waiting. And I think three to six months is a long time for after going through what we've done and what we're thinking about. I would have hoped that the final decision would be within three months, not three to six months. You don't happen to be the, in my position or sitting in my seat, so... There's another aspect I think we should discuss briefly. We have a very sad history of leaking out all kinds of uh, semi-official scuttlebutt <laughs> rumor through the organization, which, I, again, I think does more harm than good. You think they'll and pick the president? I beg your pardon? You think they'll pick the president? No, I'm not That's concerned with that. No, but I do they, think that they, we, they, we they should have die. some consensus as to what we want to say to our subordinates about what went on here.
a frank and open discussion of <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> typical <laughs> diplomatic line. No, I think Jim raised a very good Full point. Frank. We ought to There's a rumor American. mill will be churning at a fantastic rate with all of us up here. Well, everyone knows that days. we're all up here. I mean, Certainly. do we go back and tell our people uh, well, we have what no the topics yet, that we discuss and so on? Uh, yeah, it's a very it's vital issue. I don't know why, 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 why should no, we hide it? There are only four items on the agenda. Why not list these there. three items? I, I, I would say, uh, communicate worded something like this, that the president and the top executives of the company have met for the last uh, two and a half days, three days, whatever it is, at Palomino Lodge in the uh, Laurentians in, uh, and have conducted an extensive review of the uh, current situation of the company with particular reference to its future uh, and and this discussion included such subjects as professional management and, and itemize the four topics and stop right there. Oh. Say nothing more. That's right. Very good. Well, you Four months after the Palomino conference ended, Sam Steinberg announced the appointment of his son-in-law, Mel Dobrin, as president. And in the months following his appointment, a major change took place in the top management structure of the company. Jack Levine was promoted to executive vice president of all the company's retail operations, and Arnold Steinberg became executive vice president, administration and finance. The 13-man management committee, which had been the advisory body to Sam Steinberg, and which had taken part in the Palomino Conference, gave way to three smaller committees. A seven-man president's committee under Mel Dobrin, a retail committee under Jack Levine, and an administration committee under Arnold Steinberg. It was a compromise. The case against a family appointment had been lost. But the argument for strong executive or group vice presidents and a decentralization of authority from the president had apparently been won. So long, all. Cheerio. With Sam Steinberg's retirement from the presidency and the new team in place, Many of the problems which had led to the calling of the Palomino Conference seemed to be resolved. In the next four years, the corporation's sales doubled to over a billion dollars. Its shares rose from a low of $11 in 1969 to around $20 in 1974. But for all this, a fundamental aspect of the business had not changed. Sam Steinberg was still chairman of the board. Long after the Palomino conference ended, it was evident that ultimate power and the dominant influence on the business still lay where they had for over 50 years. I think it's harmful to the business if you don't give it the drive and the energy. You've got to stay with it. It's not enough to have good ideas and everything else, but you've got to bring them into being. You've got to give somebody else the opportunity to do that. But I'll always be a driving force, whether I'm president of the company or not. Always. <laughs>